So we were just talking about cycles of capitalism and how that creates inefficiencies. A justification for regulation of markets would be that governments can correct for externalities, ensure workers' rights, adjust for plan for these cycles, and they produce gross domestic product themselves in the United States. For example, almost a third of the gross domestic product is produced by government agencies. Now let's talk about globalization, capitalism across national borders. Globalization takes a liberal market approach to the market, takes a liberal, sorry, here, here's how I should say that, takes the liberal market approach worldwide, promoting unchecked flow of capital and goods and profit maximization. This is in contrast to a protectionist view of, of production, I guess I want to say here. So, or protectionist view of industry, the market, a protectionist view of the market. That would probably be the best way to say it. So somebody might impose tariffs and try to keep more of the labor within their national borders, more of the production, more of the production within their national borders so that more of the labor could be in their national borders. And they might uh, have tariffs so that other places that have lower paid, lower paid labor that, that, how do I want to say this, that corporations, that businesses within national borders can compete with businesses that are outside national borders, even though the businesses inside the national borders have to pay better wages for their workers, etc. So somebody might introduce tariffs to level the playing field a little bit. So protectionism versus globalism. The World Trade Organization, which formed in 1995, is an unelected international trade manager. It aims to keep regulation at a minimum. I think it has at least 147 member nations. And the, re the way it's justified, the, the way globalization is justified and organizations like the World Trade Organization are justified is by an appeal to aggregate welfare again. So the idea here is even if a company is, because of fierce competition, has to, has to take down their factory here in the United States and build a factory in Mexico that, if, because they'll get cheaper labor there, that the aggregate welfare will be raised by that. Though people are losing jobs here in the United States, the people in Mexico are gaining jobs. Now, they're not uh, they don't pay as well as the jobs here, but maybe relatively they pay as well to their standards of living and, you know, whatever. Uh, this is an example. I don't know if this is the case. So, um, not only that, but the consumer would see benefits in terms of lower prices. So, Although there would be job loss here, that would be counteracted by job gain somewhere else, and there would be lower priced products, so the consumer would enjoy that. So that's the justification here. However, there are criticisms. Again, we could talk about externalities here, but we've talked about that quite a bit. So making the supply lines international instead of local will lead to environmental costs and all sorts of other things. The externalities of sweatshop labor in other countries we've already talked about. Another big criticism here is now we're 
giving a big threat advantage to businesses. So their freedom, we now give businesses the freedom to operate free of the restrictions of national borders, but workers don't enjoy that same freedom. It's very difficult, very difficult, if not impossible, to get to go get citizenship in other countries where you could improve your your quality of life and improve your standards uh, of your working conditions. So businesses can leave if conditions aren't favorable for them, but workers don't have the same ability. So then we have to cater more and more towards the interests of the businesses and the workers get the short end of the stick as we see so often with capitalism. Another criticism here is the World Trade Organization is unelected and it works, so that's problematic, so it's not democratic, it's uh, unelected body. And it, so it may not work out for everybody's interests and it reifies current power relations. So whatever the member nations that have influence over it, whatever the more powerful nations are, they'll have more interest in the World Trade Organization, so that will keep comp keep certain countries down. It will reify the current power relations. All right, so finally, one of the most famous critiques of capitalism comes from Karl Marx. His critique of capitalism was scathing, and capitalists and... Proponents of capitalism and enemies of capitalism have had to grapple with his critique since he levied it. The main idea behind his critique is that workers are paid only a fraction of the value that they add to goods and services. So we as workers are working primarily for someone else's enrichment. And we, in that regard, we're alienated from our labor as a consequence of that material alienation, not psychological, the psychological alienation is a consequence of the material alienation. So as a psychological consequence, we resent the time we spend at work and we work for the weekend. So we work more and more hours to enjoy less and less time, but we have really cool gadgets when we do have time but that means we spend most of our times, most of our lives doing meaningless, unfulfilling labor, at least most of our waking hours. And that's problematic because most of us are not capitalists. Most of us don't make money just by reinvesting our money. Most of us make money by selling our labor. And if we're having, if we're not getting back what we put in, in terms of our labor, and we have to really, and there's also this phenomena that psychologically rewarding work that's factored into the salary of people. So people who have really psychologically rewarding labor, they tend to make less money. So then people are, are pressured to seek higher paying, more unfulfilling labor, and it it's worse for all the workers this way. Another problem here is greater efficiency in business. So a cor corollary of this, greater efficiency in business doesn't necessarily translate to better lives for workers. Increased efficiency is often just means more profits for the, for the corporation, and that's reinvested back into the business so that the business can remain competitive. The automation example is especially good here for our class. So there's, there was a lot of talk in this recent election cycle. Andrew Yang was concerned that the industrial, the new, I think he called it indust, the new industrial revolution, or he had some, some phrase to that effect. If we're not careful, will really put a lot, will really cause a lot of stress to the, uh, in, increased stress and lower conditions of life for the working class and increased profits for the capitalist class, because instead of having to employ workers, the capitalist class could now just employ machines. 
and where will who will see the benefits of that cheaper labor the capitalist class in terms of higher profits so the wealth inequality which is already staggering in capitalist in the capitalist world will just be exacerbated so we have a higher quality of life that we have little time to enjoy and the externalities are starting to pile up so we're starting to see more well if this is a trend that we've seen since 2008 we are starting to see more market failures and that is incredibly concerning so capitalism gives us some cool gadgets gives us no time to enjoy them and gives us a whole bunch of alienated labor but it's what we got for now so let's get to some quiz questions. So quiz question number one, in capitalist economies, who legally owns labor power? Is it A, the workers themselves, B, capitalists, or C, the state? And quiz question number two, the main critique of capitalism is that so here, by main, I mean the Marxist critique of capitalism is that A, capitalists are not adequately compensated for shouldering the burden of job creation. B, capitalism alienates workers from their labor and doesn't necessarily improve the quality of their lives. Or C, it is never criticized and shouldn't be criticized. What is the main, and by main, I mean Marxist critique of capitalism? All right, thanks for sticking with me on this rant. I'll see you next time.